Hello, my name is Lucas, this is Bit of Lit, and I'm here to talk about Leonid Andreev's story, Lazarus. It's been a long time since I've enjoyed Russian literature, ever since uh, Crime and Punishment earlier in the year. Well, actually, I did try to read The Brothers Karamazov, by, uh, both by um, Fyodor Dostoevsky. However... It was a little bit too much Dostoevsky at once, and, you know, Crime and Punishment is much shorter, but then I read that, and then I tried to read the next book right after, and no, <laughs> it just wasn't going to work. I needed to space it out. Um, anyway, it's good to be back in the Russian literature landscape and read a story about a sort of biblical figure, if I remember correctly. Lazarus himself is a character from the bible that was r revived by jesus i think in one of the gospels my memory fails me here because i haven't read the bible or exposed myself to any mm, biblically related material media of any kind in a very long time <laughs> uh anyway correct me if i'm wrong about that but I'm pretty sure he is a biblical character. Anyway, uh, in this story, we, we get to see an exploration of that sort of miracle of a man having died and come back to life, which, of course, as you know, also happens with Jesus and the Bible. But <laughs> uh, very different circumstances here. Um, he's, for example, not the son of God. But he is a man that lots of people take great interest in him, are enthused that he's back and want to know more about what it's like, about what it's like there, capital T, um, and the great beyond, I suppose. What is life like after life? What is the afterlife like? What is death like? How does it feel? But Lazarus is a changed man. We don't get a lot about, I would say, yeah, we don't get a lot about who he was beforehand. Uh, we know he's dressed as a bridegroom. Um, and we do get some small details here and there uh, fairly early on about who he was. But we don't have a great understanding of who he was. But we know who he is now. Uh, as he says later in the story, He all he can respond with is, I was dead. I was dead. And um, otherwise, he's pretty silent, uh, reticent in some ways. He doesn't doesn't really respond to things the way he used to, or the way we would expect someone to uh, if we ask a question out of curiosity. Uh, instead, we can see physically how he's changed. He's quite blue. Uh, uh, in his hands, his nails, his face... Uh, he looks like a deteriorated man, a man who has been deteriorating for three days. And his personality is sort of devoid of any life itself. Uh, very quick answers, short and to the point, doesn't elaborate on anything. And the biggest change... The most dramatic thing that people notice when they're around him are the feelings that they get when they look him in the eyes, which, of course, you know, eyes are the window of the soul and that kind of thing. And with his silence, when people ask him what it's like over there, and this blank stare that he's giving them, people become extremely uncomfortable around Lazarus. Uh, because of how changed he is. They're looking for answers, excited about this miracle of a man coming back to life. And the answers they get are uncomfortable, deeply, deeply uncomfortable, sort of signifying that there is no afterlife. You have now, and that's it. <laughs> Which is not what they want to hear. Uh, or imagine or think about at least because they don't hear that um 
eventually they sort of leave him alone. They have these visions uh, of, um, not visions, but images of Lazarus sort of going out into the desert by himself. Nobody knows what he's doing out there. But they can see him out there. And <laughs> they're very worried about <laughs> being around him. Um, eventually, uh, an artist from Rome is looking for inspiration. And he's not sure what he wants to do, but he goes to Lazarus uh, to look for inspiration and spend the night. That's all he needs, one night to get a good idea of the creations uh, he can make. He's a sculptor. Uh, he uses bronze, he uses marble, and he wants to have a chat with Lazarus. Lazarus is disinterested in this. He He's sort of apathetic to the idea, I should say. Um, he lets the artist know that uh, he has no bed for him. He has no wine. He has no lights. All things that the artist requests. And they just have a chat. Uh, of course, because he spends the night no more. He feels uh, <laughs> he's a changed man too. Uh, because what he creates... Uh, with his inspiration that he got from this meeting is a sick and twisted, disturbing uh, sculpture with a really beautiful butterfly next to it. And it horrifies his fellow artists and other people. Uh, and one guy takes a hammer, hits it twice to destroy it all but the butterfly. And he feels like, but this is not true. This is a lie in a way uh, and all this beauty and life that he saw he's lost the meaning of it all <laughs> and <laughs> I think you know uh, we're getting to some kind of existentialism in that sense um, yeah man the the impact that uh, the artist meeting the meeting Lazarus has on the artist uh, is really uncomfortable and then it gets more uncomfortable because Augustus Caesar himself wants to meet Lazarus and he invites him to Rome from Judea and Lazarus goes <laughs> and everybody in Rome hates Lazarus they he he's making all of them uncomfortable uh, exposing to them uh, some dark hidden underbelly of the lie we all tell ourselves in some way about what the afterlife, what life after death would be like. Uh, and they're getting ready to kill him, actually, because he's such a disturbance to the citizens of Rome that they're willing to send some young men, soldiers, to get him uh, and then Augustus who has been busy he, he invited Lazarus over but he's been busy with state affairs and finally he has some time and he sees Lazarus and he looks into Lazarus's eyes and he sees <laughs> he sees empires coming and going uh, all of the works all of the great works uh, of leaders fading away with time only for something new to rise, only for it to fade away with time as well. Uh, and this really leaves a deep impression on the emperor, uh, who, you know, gouges, burns out the eyes of Lazarus so that nobody can be cursed with this kind of knowledge. Um, uh, also admits that he hates Christians and this kind of thing and asks who Lazarus is, who he thinks he is, and this is when Lazarus says, I was dead. I was dead. Um, anyway, this moment gives the emperor a, a deep shock and some serious trouble. But 
simultaneously he thinks to himself like having this kind of despair or gloom or fraught terror <laughs> of <laughs> what the dark underside of life is like or what death is um, or what the meaning of life is and how meaningless it is perhaps uh it's sort of good to hold on to that for when you have the good times because uh, it makes you appreciate what you've got a little bit more. Um, anyway, Lazarus goes home with his eyes gouged out. Nobody really spends time with him anymore and then he dies. <laughs> and that's, that's the story of Lazarus. It does beg to question... Uh, the idea of miracles, right? Uh, it is an unexplainable phenomena, I suppose, of amazing proportions uh, that somebody, after not just a few minutes, but after days, comes back to life. And we do see the excitement and joy and the thrill that lots of people have only to realize, wait a second, there's something horribly wrong with this. And in this way, I think, it makes me wonder, uh, why do we consider, I don't know, why do we consider miracles only good things that happen? Uh, why do we call good things that happen that we don't know how to explain, perhaps, uh, like that, seemingly like that, uh, the resurrection of a dead man seems to be, uh, when there are also horrible things that are sort of unexplainable uh, that could happen, like the feeling that everybody gets from Lazarus. I don't know. Perhaps uh, the whole idea of miracles is just... meaningless in a way uh, I don't know um, anyway I don't have anything else to say other than it just makes me think about how we call things miracles and what that means and maybe we shouldn't and uh, what's the meaning of life and all this stuff I don't have anything else to say it's a fantastic story uh, I highly recommend it if you haven't read it before and that's all I've got for you. So thank you and goodbye.